understand this, everything is moving in the direction that the Bible says it's moving in. Jesus is coming and we've got a lot to be excited about. There's going to come a time of reckoning and that reckoning is coming soon. Well, good day to you folks. It is exciting, more exciting than you can possibly imagine. We want to welcome you back for another episode of Countdown to Eternity, and we are one day away from Thanksgiving. How exciting is that? I know that you guys have been praying for Don Stewart. He has been doing phenomenally well. We need to pray for him. The heart attack that he had was not a minor one. It was a lot more major than anybody had thought. But uh, we are looking for and praying that God, as of the day of this recording, that God will get him into surgery really quickly and that he'll have a fast recovery. But guess what? I am with another great one, the great Andy Woods. He is such a blessing. For those of you that don't know about Dr. Andy Woods, he is the pastor of Sugarland Bible Church and, in my opinion, one of the premier Bible prophecy guys. I love him. Uh, he has actually changed my mind in a few areas of the Bible, which is always uh, an inspiring thing because I kind of uh, wake up afresh and anew, especially with my outlook on 2 Thessalonians. Ironically enough, when you change my mind on 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, it kind of changed the way I looked at the whole book, which is kind of an interesting mm. thing. And so I actually redid my teaching on it. So Andy, first of all, let's start with this. How are you, bro? It's good to see you. It's been a while since we've done anything together. Yeah, James, it's been a while, but I'm doing great. And this is just a great time of the year. And I'm just uh, very thankful for everything God's done in my life. and. I'm thankful to be here with you right now. Amen. Amen. And um, <clears throat> I will get to this if we have time, but you guys definitely need to get a hold of some of Andy's books. He is an amazing writer. Uh, definitely, in many ways, it kind of sounds crazy me saying this, but uh, he reminds me a little bit of C.S. Lewis in his writing style uh, with the emphasis on Bible prophecy, <laughs> which is something C.S. Lewis didn't really do. But listen, let's get right to it, because the subject of today, I think, is how close are we really to the rapture? And, and I got to tell you, I think we're getting close. I want to start off with a video that I asked you to email me because I couldn't find it. And um, you actually aired it in your PPOV brief. Uh, um, and uh, my goodness, uh, the Pastor's Point of View podcast is a blessing. If you guys have not gone to Andy Woods' YouTube channel, you should. He's got a lot of great material there. But I want to play this video, and I'm going to set this up. This is, I believe, this is Prince Charles in Glasgow. And um, what he is actually doing here is he is addressing um, what is going on uh, with a series of issues. But we're going to catch something that he says it's pretty unique here. Mm -hmm. I want to play it for everybody. And then I want to get your thoughts on this because this is crazy, especially with the use of a particular pronoun. And I know everybody's going pronoun crazy. This is not where I'm going to, but it's the use of a particular pronoun that I think should wake up every Christian that follows Bible prophecy. So let's go ahead and play it and um, give me your thoughts on this. I think it's a, it's a very interesting video. And of course, for those of you that are listening to us on the radio, you're not missing much. Um, you'll still be hearing everything that we're discussing. So let's, uh, let's play the video. Genuinely renewable and sustainable. So Ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector, with trillions at its disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. 
So this, this is scary. I, I want to address two quick things. Number one, I want to address the military style uh, incursion in essence. I mean, that's, I, I know I'm paraphrasing slightly what he said. And then the other thing I want to point out, and, and I'm going to leave you to comment on this, is the fact that when these people write speeches, they are not only very, very good at holding to the words that are being said because every single word is vetted, including every pronoun. And I can tell you this right now, this was not just some slip. Who is he talking about when he says he? I mean, this is something you you talked about. I, I'm going to open this up to you because there's a lot to say here. Well, you know, it says, you know, um, at trillions at his disposal. Now, anybody that studied prophecy knows there's a big debate about the he or the his in Daniel 9. 27. Oh yeah. We argue that the he or the him or the his that's coming is the the man of sin. And so he <laughs> the pronoun he is a big debate in prophecy circles and lo and behold Prince Charles <laughs> of all people chimes in and he talks about how we need a military style campaign and with trillions and he says at his disposal. So whether he, it's a Freudian slip, uh, a subconscious error, whatever you want to call it, he's basically preparing the world for the Antichrist. Now, I have to tell you, James, there's um, a lot of damage control that's been done since he made that statement. People are saying, no, no, no. What he really said was it's, not his. Yeah. And I've noticed that a lot of the transcripts that have come out of this um you know, translated as it's not his. Now I've listened to this over and over and over again at every speed imaginable. He didn't say it's, <laughs> he said yeah. his. Yeah. So, so why are they so busy trying to hide the fact that he said his, I would just ask that. So I, what I think is happening here, whether Prince Charles knows it or not, is he just made a Freudian slip that they're preparing the world for somebody to come along and, and rule it. And we believe that his or him is the Antichrist. They think he's going to be some kind of savior, but biblically we know exactly who he is. Yeah. And I could not agree with you more. And uh, you said something on multiple occasions, actually, you've used different illustrations in the past. Um, perhaps my favorite illustration, and there is a reason why I shared something very similar to this, at the introduction of this show, as you said, you know, we're at the point now where we're going through the stores and we're seeing Christmas items or, you know, you're turning on the radio and you hear the Christmas music beginning to play. And that serves as evidence of the fact that we are right around the corner from Thanksgiving. And why do we know that? Because we know that Thanksgiving comes before Christmas. And it would appear as though we're in the same category right now as we are watching all of these things begin to take place. Literally, we know many of the things we're seeing uh, happening, the geopolitical shifting that's taking place uh, that is beginning to really show us the formulation of Ezekiel 38 with respect to uh, the United States becoming somewhat inconsequential in the Middle East to what is happening with Russia, with the growth of their influence. I don't know if anybody watched Belarus and what happened with the threatening of the shutdown of their oil pipeline, which of course is going to shift attention more to the resources that Israel has. It's made them energy independent all the way from the analysis that people are beginning to provide about what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, no one's really making the connection, by the way, with Saudi Arabia beginning to dismantle their relationship with the United States and become a lot closer to Russia. Uh, it is very, very interesting. And yet while the same time that that's happening, they are beginning to develop um, even more uh, closely to normalize relations with Israel. Uh, let me throw out one other thing before I ask you this other question, and that is, uh, you may or may not know this, but I had the privilege of being able to honor or to um, um, to interview uh, Israel Katz, and uh, many of you, uh, many of our listeners may or may not know who he is, but if Netanyahu does not become the next prime minister as a result of the collapse of this current government in Israel, Katz may be that guy. He is one of the prominent leaders in the Lachud. And um, although he wasn't very comfortable with the question, I asked him about the normalization agreement being formulated right now with Libya, which is, uh, again, a very interesting thing. I think it carries the same kind of interest that 
uh, I had when we were talking about normalization with Sudan and so on and so forth for obvious implications with Ezekiel 38. Either way, no matter how you cut it, it's amazing to see that we are looking at what strategically may be the beginning of the formation of what we know to be in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And again, this, this relates to the Christmas versus the Thanksgiving illustration. What do you think about all this? Well, I guess what I think about it is, you know, how many times can you be struck by lightning? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you, you start to deal with things that are statistically improbable, if not impossible. And I guess a lot of the, the word that I think is being used in prophecy circles, and I love this term, it's, it's convergence. You know, it's not a sign or two here or there. It's the whole thing coming together in concert, you know, in harmony, in unison. And of course, what we've always taught is the super sign of the end times is the regathering of Israel into their own okay. land in unbelief. Without that, you know, the whole scenario doesn't make sense. Well, that's not only, you know, has that happened and is happening, but all these other things you mentioned are all happening simultaneously. Yep. And that's why this time of the year, uh, the perfect illustration to use is the Christmas Thanksgiving illustration. I, I, I will say it's not original with me. I think it originated with the late John Walvoord. And I remember Chuck Smith um, using the illustration also, but it's a great one because we all understand the signs of Christmas, Santa Claus, Christmas tree lights, Christmas music. And when you see the signs of Christmas, you know that Christmas is coming. And you also know that Thanksgiving is coming even faster because Thanksgiving occurs earlier on the calendar than Christmas. And so we don't believe we're in the tribulation now, but we believe the stage is being set for it, clearly. And if the stage is being set for the tribulation period and the rapture of the church precedes the tribulation period, and it does, then the rapture is coming even faster. And if that's all true then it, we ought to be living with more urgency as believers and we ought to be pressing into God's purpose for our lives. Cause you know, from the human side of things, we might not have a lot of time left. Yeah. I, boy, would I agree with you. And it is interesting how we're beginning to see this conglomerate of people that are coming together in agreement with the taking away of Liberty with the taking away of freedoms, um, I have always contended uh, the fact that when uh, when we look at the subject of freedom, it was God's idea, it wasn't man's idea. And in reality, when people walk away from the Lord, they oftentimes relinquish their liberties and their freedoms. Freedoms is the first thing to go. That's why we're seeing the rise of Marxism. That's mm -hmm. why we're seeing many of the elements that we're seeing right now, because we are a godless society that continues uh, to allow our freedoms to be robbed. And it's why I'm so astounded by pastors who won't sound off and speak about these things. But I got to show you another article. Um, mm -hmm. I'm showing you an article that you actually showed me. I didn't even know about the existence of this until you brought it to my attention in the uh, last PPOV that you did. And this one, to me, is strikingly crazy. And I'm going to go over to the screen um, so that our audience can see this. And this is an article about Klaus Schwab's school for COVID dictators. Um, and I, I, this is astounding to me, this article, because Klaus Schwab in 1992 starts a school that in essence teaches future dictators, forgive me for saying that, right? Mm -hmm. A future mm -hmm. leader is basically how to be the best possible Marxisms that they can be and to really start the incubation of what is what we know to be the Great Reset. Now, I've always said that Satan is all about the long game. These Democrats have always been about the long game, but the globalists are even more about the long game. And there are lots of people, according to this article, that have graduated from this school. Angela Merkel, uh, Nicholas Sarkozy, uh, Tony Blair, um, we look at many of our own politicians, Pete Buttigieg, and of course, California's governor, Gavin Newsom, Emmanuel Macron. Um, it's just, there's, they don't stop. The prime minister of Hungary. Uh, how about the chancellor of Austria? 
uh, we get on. All of these people have graduated. There are 1,300 graduates, but perhaps the ones that are most astounding to me are these folks right here. Mm -hmm. Th this, this to me is astounding that Bill Gates would uh, graduate from this. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. Um, I, this is amazing to me. This is astounding. And this has a lot of significance for a lot of reasons. Uh, what would you say about that? Because your analysis on this was fantastic. Well, I just thought it was very interesting when right when COVID hit, all of these, um, whether they're political leaders, business leaders, cultural leaders, you know, as we say in church circles, they're all singing off the exact same song sheet. <laughs> they're, oh, yeah. They, they all say the exact same things. They want more uh, government, more mandates. They want, you know, coerced, you know, mandatory injections. They want sur surveillance. And... Of course, one of the names that you, I don't think, had a chance to mention, Chelsea Clinton. Oh, yeah. And they're all saying the exact same thing and prescribing the exact same solution. And at some point, you got to ask yourself, why do these people all say the same thing? Well, now we have an answer. <laughs> uh, Klaus Schwab uh, put together this school as a parallel all the way back in the 90s. I mean, That's most right. people can't even remember what they were doing in the 90s. I'm 1993. I'm trying to think what I was even doing. I think I was trying to survive law school at the time and get out in one piece. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, you know, these people all knew what they were doing in the 90s. They were part of this Klaus Schwab school and they were being positioned already back then, you know, for key piece uh, realms of, of leadership. They were being fast tracked for this very moment. And so, you know, people say, oh, you come on, you're into conspiracy, conspiracy theories. No, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is just reading comprehension and reading, you know, about this school. And so all of these people have been programmed. Actually, this is quite uh, biblical in the sense, you remember what Nebuchadnezzar did uh, when he brought Daniel in Daniel chapter one into the 70 year captivity. You know, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. when he came for the nation of Israel in the seven-year captivity, didn't come in one foul swoop. He came in three waves. In 605 BC, he took Daniel and his three teenage friends into captivity. Then he came again in 597 BC, and that's when Ezekiel was taken. And then finally, he came in 586 BC to destroy the city and the sanctuary, but he came first for Daniel and his three friends in that first group that went. And Daniel 1 tells you all about it. He brainwashed them, uh, or tried to anyway, in the ways of the Chaldeans, because the strategy is if you can take the best and the brightest and get them onto your side, you can talk the rest of the population into, you know, peaceably cooperating. That's yep. what Klaus Schwab was doing all the way back in 1993. Yep. And, and it is amazing because he has been remarkably successful at doing that. And the new thing that people are beginning to stand behind is uh, an emergency that they're making far greater than the one that they uh, made with respect to uh, everything tied to these mandates and so on and so forth. Uh, the bigger emergency now is... Uh, climate change, as they would call it. Of course, they have to call it climate change because they used to use global warming and global cooling and, you know, the ebb and flow of the normal weather conditions on Earth reflected something directly opposite of the contentions that they were making. But um, you have doctors now who have diagnosed, there is one in the UK yeah. Yeah. who has actually diagnosed a patient with an illness called climate change. I mean, <laughs> I, it's it's ridiculous. And they basically say that the illness that the patient had uh, directly related to some kind of uh, mass pollution through something going on. I, I don't remember what the exact details were. And now there's a coalition of doctors who are forming, literally forming, to actually make contentions with respect to this issue. And um, it's amazing because I think they are setting us up for the climate of the Antichrist. That's what I think is going on. 
Well, amen to that. You know, let me read this quote. It's just a sentence from Al Gore's book, Earth in the Balance. And again, this goes back to 1992. Um, the quote is, we must make the rescue of the environment the central organizing principle of civilization, close quote. Ooh. So in other words, the issue of the environment, and I, I have to be clear, I think we're both environmentalists in the sense that we like clean air and clean water and, you know, we're good with all that. But the problem is they're using the issue of the environment to promote earth worship, which is unbiblical, and to promote world government, which is unbiblical. And they had to okay. come up with a global problem because only if humanity embraces a global problem will we accept their global solution, which is always the same. It's global government to solve this global problem. And Al Gore said all the way back then, that's why we need to make the rescue of the environment the central organizing principle of civilization. And it's amazing how they've succeeded to the point where now we have this doctor diagnosing a patient with the disease of climate change. That's insane. I think that's the first time in history that's happened. Yes, you're but correct. Now it's going to form a trend where you can actually have the disease of climate or a, whatever you want to call it, the virus of climate change. So apparently they're going to ride this COVID and whatever other crisis they're going to come up with and this uh, environmental issue. I mean, they're going to ride this right into the barn, and this is how they're going to bring in world government. It's called management by crisis. By the way, James, if you go back in history, the Nazis did something very similar. They started a fire in the Reichstag building and blamed it on their political opponents. And then they said, um, hey, put us into power, and we'll save you from these kinds of crises. You just have to give us some police powers when they're the ones that started the crisis to begin with. So Amazing. you remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, we're not unaware of Satan's schemes. I think we're in church circles largely ignorant of how Satan works. And so that's why we need your shows like yours and others to keep bringing these things to people's attention. Yeah, amen, bro. And I could not think of a better way to close because we are out of time. And um, I want to just give you a final minute, just one minute to maybe give us some closing comments regarding all of this. Um, for those of you that are watching us on YouTube, we will be back hopefully live on Thanksgiving morning, uh, which I think will be a great thing. But uh, any final words that you have for us? Because it's uh, your last thought is a very good and appropriate thought for us to close on. It is riddled with truth. Um, what would you say? Well, the this, this, this statement in prophecy circles that I love today. Others have used it. I use it. It's, it's things are not falling apart. You know, they're falling into place. Yes. And you only would know that if you gave yourself to studying the 27% of the Bible dealing with what we're talking about here, eschatology, you know, the study of the end, which is a very important area of systematic theology. And it's a light shining in a dark place. Second Peter chapter one, verse 19 says, and unless you start studying it and understanding it, you're just going to be gripped with fear with the rest of the world. And you're not going to live your life with hope and optimism. And when I see these things happening, as much as it's disheartening, it actually is simultaneously heartening to me because the coming of the Lord, as his word says, is very, very near. And so we got to get we got to start sharing the gospel and we got to start living as Christians for Jesus as if all of this matters because it matters a great deal. Amen. Those are some great words. And of course, we are out of time. Uh, guys, we know that it is a blessing. I mean, we listen, you don't have to be listening to us, but you do. You take us into your living rooms, your jogs, your runs, your walks, and we don't take that for granted. I know that uh, Don has um, just wanted me to tell you that he loves you all and he's praying for you. Um, Andy, what a blessing that you could be here with us. On behalf of the great Don Stewart and Andy Woods, I just want you guys to know that it has been an honor and a privilege to be able to do this show for you. May God richly bless you as we continue to count down to eternity. 
Thanks for joining us, but don't click away just yet. If you want to catch previous episodes, you can find them on countdown the number 2 eternity.com or listen on your favorite podcast app. Visit educatingourworld.com for additional resources that Pastor Don Stewart has available, such as Ancient Mysteries of the Bible Solved, What Happens One Second After We Die, and all other titles are completely free to download. Before you go, follow James Cadiz on Instagram and Rumble. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube at Calvary Chapel Signal Hill. Countdown to Eternity is listener-supported. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you.